continue mechanics the stress tensor. The diagram given below shows a continuum body in the form of a unit cube. In other words, a cube with sides of length equal to 1 that is in its current, in other words, deformed configuration with respect to the origin O of a right-handed rectangular coordinate system. The continuum body B has uniform density rho equal to 1 and is acted upon by a body force per unit mass given by the vector B. It therefore follows that the body force per unit volume is equal to the density multiplied by the vector B and integrating this quantity over the volume of a cube we obtain the total body force acting on the cube. The continuum body B is also acted upon by surface forces per unit area given by the stress vector T where the vector n is a unit vector that is normal to the surface of the cube. Consider the surface A, B, F, E. The unit vector that is normal to this surface is the basis vector E1. To determine the stress vector acting on this surface, first sum on J in Cauchy's formula and substitute for the components of the unit vector. then sum on i and substitute for the given components of the stress tensor. On the surface A, B, F, E we have that x1 is equal to 1. Therefore, integrating the stress vector over the surface, we obtain the total force acting on the surface. This procedure must be repeated for the remaining five surfaces of the cube. Consider the surface O, C, G, D. The unit vector that is normal to this surface is the negative of the basis vector E1. On this surface, we have that X1 is equal to zero. Therefore, integrating the stress vector over the surface, we obtain the total force acting on the surface. Consider the surface B, C, 
g f. The unit vector that is normal to this surface is the basis vector E2. On this surface, x2 is equal to 1. Therefore, integrating the stress vector over the surface, we obtain the total force acting on the surface. Consider the surface O, A, E, D. The unit vector that is normal to this surface is the negative of the basis vector E2. On this surface, x2 is equal to 0. Therefore, integrating the stress vector over the surface, we obtain the total force acting on the surface. Consider the surface D, E, F, G. The unit vector that is normal to this surface is the basis vector E3. On this surface, we have that X3 is equal to 1. Therefore, integrating the stress vector over the surface, we obtain the total force acting on the surface. Consider the surface O, A, B, C. The unit vector that is normal to this surface is the negative of the basis vector E3. On this surface, X3 is equal to 0. Therefore, integrating the stress vector over the surface, we obtain the total force acting on the surface. Therefore, the body force plus the sum of the surface forces gives us the total force acting on the continuum body B.